who is live art mini from in the studio so i'm going to be showing you a few different things you can do with colored pencils today i'm also going to be introducing you to the artist jason braun you can see two pieces on either side of me done by jason he's actually an artist that attends the studio here uh, hello to jason if you're out there if you're watching if you're a studio member please say hi comment give us a like give us a heart give us a thumbs up Tell us how you're doing and tell us if you've been making some art. Uh, other artists I'm going to introduce you today is a famous artist is Victor Fasarelli. He is a op artist because what we're going to be doing is some optical illusions. So a few simple tricks to make things look a little bit more three dimensional. So if you are going to be participating with us today, all you'll need simply is a sheet of paper, a ruler if you have one and some colored pencils. And before we get started, I do want to give a thank you to our first ever sponsor on Live Art Mini. We want to say a big thank you to LCNB National Bank, who is sponsoring today's Live Art Mini for all your banking needs. They have many locations throughout Butler County. So we put out a survey a couple weekends ago. It was said, do you want to learn more about watercolors or colored pencils? And overwhelmingly, colored pencils were the media of choice. So I had to think like, what are we gonna do? There's so much you can do with colored pencils. So one thing that I've always liked to do since I was like way back in high school was to make things look three dimensional. I think it's pretty cool when you take a flat piece of paper and just a drawing and make things look like they're popping off the page. So I started playing around on the Google and found some images. I'm gonna pull them up right now. So some simple colored pencil drawings that you can see here, ways to make things look more three-dimensional with just a few colors. Here's another example. So you can see you're just going to take some wavy lines and then how you color it in, how I'm going to show you to color it in today, is going to make it look like it's popping off the page, kind of wavy, undulating, or going into a center point kind of like this. So this is a good example of what we're going to be practicing today. Let me pull you back up here to the camera now. So I'm going to get my materials ready and I'm going to cut over to our second camera, which is going to give you some more details. And you can follow along at home if you like. Hello. So let me start off by getting just a sheet of paper here. I'm going to start with a regular pencil with an eraser in case I do make a mistake. I want to fix that up. And then I'm going to start by just choosing a point on the paper. It could be in the center, it could be off to the side. I like choosing something that's off center a little bit. It's not drawing your eye to the center like a target. It's not too far to the edge, just nice and off center. And what we're going to do is start by some drawing some lines right across the page going through that dot. I'm just going to go ahead and angle it in another direction. You don't have to measure out anything. All you really need is a straight edge, a ruler. You could use the edge of a book. Anything straight really goes all the way across the page from edge to edge, right through the center of the dot. I get bored pretty easy, so I'm going to change the thickness as I go. I'm going to have some thin areas, some thick areas. So all the lines are kind of converging to that one point. I'm just going to finish off the paper this way. So this is going to be the first of two drawings that we are doing today. And as always, don't feel rushed if you want to just watch along at home while I do the few demonstrations. That's cool. And then you can go back later and do it yourself. And as always, I'll be putting this uh, up with all the other videos on YouTube on our Inside Out Studio YouTube channel which you'll find in the comments because Kim Neal Davis who is our marketing and finance manager she is running the booth in the office right now so she'll be commenting on this feed and then providing some links for you. I hear Jody Mann is out there I hope Jody you're having a good day the sun's out get outside enjoy some of that weather it's going to be a little bit warmer than yesterday and I hope you're doing this drawing with us too. So before I get into the colored pencils, what I'm gonna do to add a little bit more depth is add some curves in between those lines. So I'm pretty much just making some U shapes and the U's are gonna be bending in towards that center. So this is a, we already have two ways of creating depth in our drawing right now. 
One is scale, because it looks like the lines are getting smaller and smaller as it gets to that point. Another is the curve line helps to make it look cylindrical. So I'm just going to go around here, making these curved U-shapes and should be curving towards that center point. And if you're just joining us, if you are an Inside Out Studio artist, feel free to comment, say hi. We're glad to have you here. And I just got word that Jonathan McDowell is joining us today as well. Hello, Jonathan. Thanks for joining us. I did get to see some of the artists yesterday on a um, Zoom. The Butler County Board of Developmental Disabilities is having chat with Courtney and Connie, and that's going to be on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. So if you'd like to join in on that, check it out. Go to the Butler County Board of Developmental Disabilities Facebook page and request to get in on that Zoom meeting. That is chatting with Courtney and Connie. I could be butchering that name, but you get to hang out with some friends have a little chit chat and they have special guests every week. I was lucky enough to be their guest just yesterday. So now I've got all my lines going towards that center point. I've got all the U-shaped curves going towards that center point. So let's pull out the colored pencils. Now what's nice about doing some art with colored pencils is it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, these were just probably five or six dollars off Amazon. You got the Prang. Prang is like the cousin to Crayola. They are just as good, very comparable. Nothing against Crayola. I'm going to pull out my colored pencils here. I was talking to Jean Sparks yesterday, mother of Dwayne, who attends the studio, and she said they had them at the dollar store as well. So, Dwayne, I hope you're out there coloring along with me. And then, really, you can pick whatever color you like because the first technique we're going to demonstrate, or I'm going to demonstrate and talk about, is just a fade. So, we're going to start on the line itself, pick any one section. And then you're going to start on the edge, on the line, and as you get to the center of your section, you're going to start to fade out until it turns white, or it stays white, I should say. Paper's already white. Mm -hmm. So just color in one direction. You want to press hard on the edge, and then it gets to the center. You want to let it fade out by putting less and less pressure on there. And what I usually do if I'm doing this is just go around and pick different sections randomly. There's no specific order. I'm going to pick one a couple rows down. Just start pressing really hard right on the line. And then fade out by putting less pressure on the pencil. And let's say you're heavy handed. If it's hard, harder to put less pressure on it, you can always move your hand up on the color pencil itself and you don't have as much pressure going on there. And this is something fun that you can do at home. Like I said, it didn't take me more than like two minutes to prep the page with the lines and the point. You can do it while you're watching TV, listening to music. And then you fade away as you get towards the center. Go back to the other side of that space, pressing hard and fading out as we get to the center. I hear that Brett Garrett is out there as well. Brett, I hope you're having a good Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to do one here on the outside edge. So at this point, I'm just picking different shapes, spots to color in. Pressing hard right on that line, going towards the center, and then fading out. And some good practice when you're doing color pencils is to color in the same direction. So if you've noticed as I've been coloring, the direction of my pencil lines, I've been going towards that point as well. So I'm coloring with the flow 
of the optical illusion that I'm trying to create. Everything is moving towards that center dot. Then after this one, I'm gonna change up the color just to add a little bit of variation. As you can see, it does take a while. So this kind of fits in with the live art minis that Amanda Joy started us off with, I'm going to say six weeks ago. It's been six weeks. It has been a long break for the studio. So it's something meditative, something that you can just do to enjoy. Practice the art of coloring. I'll switch to a nice violet here. Go to the other side, pressing hard so you get a nice, nice deep color, and then letting it fade out to the white of the paper in the center. So as you can see, you start to get that optical illusion happening where it looks like each section that we created is kind of curved a little bit because it looks like it's picking up a light source on the very top peak of that line. So like I said, this is the first of two projects that we are doing today. I'm just going to add a few more spaces to this one before moving on. This is one of those addictive kind of projects. Once you start coloring, you don't want to stop. I did one last night for an example. Probably was coloring for about an hour and a half straight and time went by just like that. Switch over here to pink. Fade out, jump to the other side, that line, go up and fade out. And while I'm completing just this little section here, just want to go back to last week's Live Art Mini where we're making cardboard masks. If anyone out there made some cardboard masks, please you can go ahead and post some pictures in the comments. Maybe you got them on your phone or your computer. Or if you're making any art along with us here at Live Art Mini, you could send a picture to the Inside Out Studio Facebook page. On Tuesdays, Kim's been featuring pictures of our artists while they're at home, what kind of art that they're doing, things that they're making. This needs some cool colors. I'm gonna go with a, a nice green right in here. So at this point, I think you should probably have the hang of it. You're basically looking at the lines we made, coloring in dark around the edges, and then fading away to the white of the paper in the middle by putting less and less pressure on there. At this point, I'm going to pull over the example I made last night. So as you can see here, here's one that's filled in all the way. Like I said, very cheap and expensive materials here. Just a simple pack of colored pencils. This is actually just on printer paper. Nothing more than that needed for this other than a straight edge to get your lines. So when it gets all filled in, you really get this wavy effect happening. And what I did for this one is I pulled out a gray color pencil. And if you don't have gray, you could use black at home as well. And I just shade it in slightly over top of all the coloring I did here in the middle. And that kind of agreed down the colors and made them duller, which has an, an enhanced effect to make it look even farther away. Because things that are close are more intense, have higher contrast, whereas things get farther away, they're a little bit duller, hazier. And then you can also go back, once you filled in all your pieces, you can go back with gray. I call it in the cracks, it's literally just a line on the paper. But in between each section, adding some gray there to make it a little bit darker or duller, or adding some black there just to increase the shadow that's happening and make it look even more three-dimensional. So that is the first, right back over here. That is the first of the two op art color pencil projects that we're doing today. So the technique was pretty simple. You're gonna be putting less and less pressure on your pencil fading from really intense color to a light color to create the illusion of light and shadow. Now we, before we move on to the next one, on the other side of this little commercial here we have for you, I'm going to show you an artist named Victor Vassarelli. He's a French artist that was considered the grandfather of op art. 
But once again, we did want to thank LCMB for sponsoring today's live art mini, and they provided the commercial with us. If you'll take 30 seconds to enjoy that. This isn't our first stand against adversity. It's probably not yours either. Those challenges taught us a few lessons. Keep things simple, help where you can, and none of us can do it alone. At LCNB, we're here to talk, to find solutions together, and rise to the occasion. We will get through this together, because we know a brighter day is emerging. Today, tomorrow, LCNB National Bank is here for you. Member FDIC. Thank you again to LCNB. So I do want to share another op artist with you. And this is a famous artist. Let me pull up his image here. This is Victor Vassarelli. So he's considered the grandfather of op art. And you can see him in front of one of his large scale paintings there. So he was a French artist that started painting in the 1930s. He did pass away in 1997. Uh, painted all of his life, had a very, very long career. And he did paintings that looked like this. So he was playing with light and dark and then color intensity as well to make it look like images and shapes were popping off the surface of his canvas. Here's another example of his piece there. It makes it look, he's playing with perspective to make it look a little bit three dimensional and also playing with different colors to make it really pop and vibrate off the surface of the canvas. And the last one I want to show you is right here. So it kind of looks like you're going down a tunnel. It's getting a little bit lighter and cooler tone as you get to the back of it there. So he also worked in, aside from just painting himself, he worked with screen printing, different technology as that came to age. Like I said, he was painting between 1930s and really the 1970s. That's when he got really, really famous for his op art. So we're gonna show you another technique to do. And this kind of plays off, I mentioned uh, Live Art Minis on YouTube channel. This goes back to the very first Live Art Mini done by Amanda Joy. So we're going to take the lesson that she did on meditative circle drawing and turn that into a three-dimensional piece with some colored pencil techniques. So I'm going to switch you over here to the work camera and start something new. And then if you did, did join us for Live Art Mini number one, we were just talking about doing something a little bit meditative. We started drawing with some circles. It can be pretty much anywhere on your paper. Some can be even coming off the edge. Some can be touching each other, some can be small. So really you're just zoning out, making some circles, enjoying some music, maybe TV zone in the background, whatever you like to do in your spare time. Maybe you want to do this with your kids something to do with family, if you're getting bored of binge watching things on Netflix. All right, and I do have a finished one prepared as well. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit later, but you could fill up the whole page with circles if you like. When I did mine, I kind of left some open, what we call negative space in the background around the circles, because uh, uh, my son's really into the moon and outer space, and for me this has an outer space feel to it, and the pencil lead just fell out of my pencil, so I think this is a good stopping point for the drawing part. And I'm going to jump into the colored pencils. So one thing I'm going to do is separate my colored pencils. I'm going to put them in warms and cools, because this is another technique or color theory way of creating depth is in general, cool colors recede. And if you think about cool colors, they're your blues. And then there can be some greens. There can be warm and cool greens. There can also be warm and cool violets. So I've got a pile of cool colors over here. I'm going to switch this purple over as well. You've got your neutrals, which are your grays, blacks, and whites. Also have silver. That must have been a premium set. There's some silver and gold in there. So I'm gonna pull the neutrals aside and then have my warms over here. So I got my warms, 
got my cools. Like I said, warms really kind of pop out. They come at you. Whereas cool colors recede and fade away towards the background. So what I'm going to do is turn these circles into more three-dimensional spheres. And I'm going to do it with some warm colors. So I'll start with yellow, kind of like the sun. I'm going to use the same um, technique from the first one, which is simply just pressing really hard around the outside edge. And then as I go towards the center of this circle, I'm going to fade away, leaving just the white of the paper. So pressing hard towards the outside edge, fading away towards the center of the circle, leaving the white of the paper. And then I always like to color with the form of what I'm creating. So since this is a circle and it's going to be an illusion of a sphere, I'm going to color in a curved motion. Just like before, I was coloring in one direction, going towards the center point. This time, I'm going to color in a curved motion, going around and around. So we've got some nice intense colors around the outside edge and I'm fading away to the white of the paper in the center of the circle. And then one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to layer the colors as well. So one thing that's good to do with colored pencils is to layer them. I'm going to add a little bit of orange on top of the yellow. And this is really good too if you have a simple set, maybe like a 10 count or a 12 count pack. You can really vary your colors by putting different groupings together. So I'm just going to make a yellow orange by lightly layering the orange over top. This is going to help you get some more sophisticated colors. So instead of just blue, you could have a, a greenish blue. You could have a violet blue. I'm just going to go round and round, adding a little bit of orange on top. That. Pressing hard. One thing you want to do is more intense color around the outside edge as well, fading to the white of the paper at the very center point. So that's going to start to create the illusion of a sphere coming up off the paper. I'm going to switch my colors over here. I'm going to move on to a pink. So pressing a little bit harder on the outside, fading to white in the middle. Going around the circle. So generally I'm going to use a lot of warm colors for these spheres or bubbles as I create the illusion of them popping off the page. I'm going to go back for a deeper red here just to accentuate that pink just so it's not one note. It adds a little bit of depth to that color. Pressing a little bit harder around the outside edge so you have a different intensity to it. Deeper colors around the outside getting lighter towards the top there. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to start on the background and show you some effects that you can do there. I'm going to go with the gold. Pressing harder on the outside edge, fading out towards the middle. Pretty simple once you get the hang of it. And I'm going to add a second color just because that's what I've been doing to make a little more sophisticated palette. So I'm going to go with a brown. Brown complements gold pretty well. Pressing hard on the outside edge, fading away to the middle. So while we're talking about realism, there's one little side trick that you can do to add just a, a touch of real life quality 
to this abstract colored pencil drawing because really we're just dealing with shapes and colors right now nothing's real about this it's kind of flat on the paper as we start to try to create realism so one thing that we have is called reflective light so if you have ever noticed that if there is a really bright color next to another object like say you're wearing a really really bright orange shirt or a bright pink shirt when you stand around things it kind of gets a reflection of that color on the objects around you and that is called reflective light so what we can do is add a little bit of that happening with these spheres and bubbles that we're making so if the gold's over here by the yellow i can add a little bit of come back to the gold here a little gold on the side of this yellow ball that we're making like light reflecting onto that same could be said for yellow onto the gold or for that matter yellow onto the pink and then we've got a trade there we've got to put some pink on the yellow too ba bam All right, so you just have a little reflective light so that the, the bubbles, your spheres that you're creating are affecting each other. If you can see a little bit closer there. Now we're gonna add some background. So the backgrounds, I'm gonna consider this the negative space. Now I'm gonna start in with some blue because if you're just now joining us, you might've missed it. We were talking about how cool and warm colors affect the eye. Warm colors tend to pop out, grab your attention. Whereas cool colors sit back and relax and kind of chill in the background. So I'm going to take some blue and lightly start sketching in. And this is, I'm going to add some layering to these colors again as well. Just how we talked about adding more colors on top of each other, create more dimension and more depth. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for that compliment. I'm glad you enjoy what we're doing here. So just a quick layer of light blue, and then I'm gonna go progressively darker to create more dimension. So I'm gonna go with this blue violet, adding some around the edge of the bubbles and spheres. pressing down about a consistent amount. And then as I fade away from the spheres into this big open space, I'm just gonna let that color fade out as well. So for those of you at home, if you have nothing to do tonight, grab some paper, grab some color pencils, practice your shading and layering creating three-dimensional effects. And the term was op art, which is short for optical illusion. Because we're playing nothing more than colored pencils and paper, but creating this three-dimensional effect. And then I'm gonna go one darker, go with our deep blue here. And this time I'm gonna stick around the edge of these bubbles, really pressing hard, and then fading away pretty quick. That way, if you can see at home, you've got this kind of like three layers of blue happening. There's that nice, nice light sky blue, the blue violet around there, and then around the edge, just this really deep blue tone to make the bubbles pop even more. You guys are doing a lot out there if you're following along. We're using so many techniques to make these colored pencils look three-dimensional. We're fading from light to dark to provide a light source. We're layering the colors to make it more dimensional. We're doing reflective light off of these objects to make them look like they're interacting with each other. And we're also using contrast. So we have the, the light, warm colors against the dark, cool colors to make it really pop off the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to example I was working on. Here's something that's a little bit more developed. You can see it's kind of spherical. It looks like it's the illusion of bubbles coming out of water or planets floating around in outer space, just adding a little bit of deep blue around the edge to make them pop even more. So I would keep doing this. This one might take a few hours. Keep doing this, fill up the whole page. You have this kind of outer space, underwater feel, something that's really cool and something that's three-dimensional. And before we leave today, 
I did say I was going to introduce you to our artist here at Inside Out, Jason Braun. You've got a couple pieces around me. You've got Freddie Mercury from Queen. This is all done in colored pencils. And we're featuring Jason because that's his material of choice. He really loves to work with colored pencils. And then you also have this Day of the Dead picture here. This was an award winner from Art and Soul competition up in Xenia last year. And Jason actually got a painting he did, uh, an homage to Victor, or Vincent Van Gogh into the competition this year. So I just want to share some images that he's done before we leave here today. So here's a close-up of Freddie Mercury. Like I said, these are all done by hand by Jason in color pencils. Here's a close-up of the Day of the Dead portrait. He loves portraits, he loves rock music. Back in the day, Jason was a heavy metal guitarist. That explains a lot, like this portrait of Steven Tyler here. And here is the man himself. So Jason's been known to take commissions in the past as well. So if you have a portrait that you like done, it doesn't have to be a rock singer. It doesn't have to be heavy metal related in any way at all. Jason would love to do a portrait for you. He's also done pet portraits in the past. He did a couple dogs during Christmas time because he is interested in earning a paycheck. So that commission goes to Jason if you do choose to have something done. Uh, here's a piece that he did recently. This is the cover of The Division Bell by Pink Floyd for all of you classic rock uh, fans out there. And then coming off of that, one thing that we do here at the art studio is present other materials to artists. So Jason came in with a very strong background in colored pencils and realism, obviously. But we tried to teach him a few things along the way and he's enjoyed that. He's got a number of glass magnets that he's done. And recently he turned that Division Bell drawing into a glass piece. So this is a glass stand piece. It's done in fused glass by Jason. So you can see the dimension there. And then Jason took that drawing, we put it underneath a clear sheet of glass. And if you can see up close, these are all chipped pieces of glass that he assembled on top, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. So he could create the Division Bell glass stand piece. And then Kim's also gonna put into the comment section that we recently did an online store via the Greater Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. And this is one of the pieces that we're featuring that's on sale. And those pieces are on sale through this Friday only, including this wonderful large Brett Garrett painting behind me. So go check out our online store, go check out those sale items, support our artists, buy something for your family and friends. Uh, you know Mother's Day is coming up. We also have curbside pickup if you're looking for that last minute gift as well. So hope you had a good time. Gave you a few projects that you can try at home with colored pencils. And as always, we'd love for you to come back later Post the drawings that you've done in the comment section. Show us that what you've been working on at home. If you want to do your own twist on what you've learned here or do your own separate color pencil drawing, that's cool too. And then since so many people really wanted to see colored pencil techniques, we're going to make this a two-week session. So today was about op art and making three-dimensional ways for things to pop off your page with color pencil. And next week we're going to go back to some traditional realism. So think Bob Ross, think landscapes, think about something more traditional. And one thing that you can do if you want to join along next week with colored pencils to do a landscape is to go on the Google, go online and type in a landscape coloring page because we don't want you to have to draw the landscape itself. We're just gonna focus on the colored pencil techniques. So what I've done is found a few. So here's a nice lake scene. Really simple to Google landscape coloring page. Here's a nice little river scene along with a cabin. So I'm going to be working on top of those with colored pencils to teach you how to make it look three-dimensional and realistic. And before we go, I want to give another big shout out to LCNB for sponsoring Live Art Mini. Thank you very much for doing that. We, we appreciate your support. So until next Wednesday at 1 o'clock, this is Stephen Smith for Live Art Mini. Feel free to shoot any questions, comments, or if you want to learn something specific in the future, you can go ahead and send that to the Inside Out Studio Facebook page. So hope you had fun. I had some fun with you. And get some coloring go going on. Bye-bye, everybody.